The late Devonian was a time of profound change. The supercontinent of Gondwana stretched across the southern hemisphere, its vast landscapes teeming with primitive plants and early terrestrial animals. Fern-like trees reached for the skies, and the first forests began to take root. The air was thick with the scent of fresh vegetation, and a chorus of ancient insects filled the atmosphere. In what would one day become southeastern Australia, a dramatic tectonic collision left its mark on the land in the many faults created and in the mineral riches it deposited. To the west of the Walhalla goldfields, we have a zone known as a Backark Basin. This Backark Basin hosted many supervolcanic eruptions during the late Devonian, but the Cerberian caldera was the largest, and that's what we'll be discussing in this video. Remember to check out the Oz Geographics website to see the article for this video. The link to that will be down in the comments and the description below. Let's get into it. Without warning, the ground trembled. Gentle rumbles quickly escalated into violent shakes, causing ancient trees to sway and creatures to flee in panic. The sky darkened as a massive plume of ash and smoke began to rise, casting a foreboding shadow over the land. The Cerberian caldera, a monstrous supervolcano, had awakened. With a deafening roar, it unleashed its fury upon the world. Molten lava burst forth, flowing like fiery, debris-laden rivers, incinerating everything in its path. The once blue sky turned a menacing shade of grey as ash and pyroclastic flows blanketed the landscape. The very air became scorching, making it nearly impossible to breathe. This was no ordinary eruption. The Cerberian caldera, being a sub-aerial caldera, erupted above water. Its cataclysmic power evident in the vast columns of ash that reached for the heavens and the rivers of lava that reshaped the land. For days the eruption continued, its relentless energy transforming the serene Devonian landscape into a hellscape of fire and ash. This eruption overlaps with the timing of the Devonian extinction event, and one can't help but wonder what role the Cerberian caldera played. When the fury of the Cerberian caldera finally subsided, the world that emerged was unrecognisable. The lush forests of the Devonian were buried beneath volcanic rock and ash. The once clear rivers were choked with sediment, and the sky, which had been darkened for days, slowly began to clear, revealing a sun that cast a muted reddish glow. The Cerberian caldera's original size, before erosion, was an impressive 27 kilometres or 17 miles in diameter. The eruptions took place along the edge, leading to an accumulation of volcanic rocks on the caldera's floor. As the volcano's activity persisted and its magma chamber depleted, the caldera progressively lowered. When this supervolcano experienced a caldera collapse, the land itself became fractured, forming ring dikes, circular faults that we see in the largest of volcanic eruptions. But nature, in its infinite resilience, began the slow process of healing. Over time, rains washed away the ash, and the first signs of life began to emerge from the scorched earth. Ferns and mosses, hardy pioneers, colonised the barren landscape, paving the way for more complex plants and animals. The Cerberian caldera, now silent, stood as a testament to the Earth's raw power. Its vast expanse, a scar on the land, would serve as a reminder of the day the world changed forever. But from this cataclysmic event, new opportunities arose. As the millennia passed, the memories of the eruption faded, but the legacy of the Cerberian caldera lived on. The land, once ravaged by fire and ash, was reborn, its beauty and diversity a testament to the enduring spirit of life. Thanks for watching.